Today we're going to barrel age a cocktail, the barrel aged El Presidente. For this recipe, you're going to need a large measuring cup, a smaller measuring cup, a bar spoon, a funnel, a fine mesh strainer, a bottle, a pitcher, and most importantly, a small oak barrel. The ingredients are light rum, white vermouth, curacao, and grenadine, with a maraschino cherry and an orange peel for garnish. Aging a cocktail in a barrel will not change the underlying flavors of the drink, but it will alter some of the fringe characteristics. Side by side, the aged and fresh El Presidente are similar, but the aged version is heavier and deeper. Some of the sharper edges of the drink are rounded off. You can tell the two are related, but they're not the same. El Presidente is a misunderstood drink. Its inventor, its ingredients, its vintage are all commonly surrounded in myth. One of those myths is that the drink was invented by Eddie Volca, an American expat bartender working in Havana during Prohibition. Also, for decades, the drink was frequently made with dry vermouth, in a two-to-one ratio rum to vermouth. But thanks to the digging by cocktail historians David Wondrich, Eric Felton, and Fernando Castellon, we now know a lot more about the drink. The cocktail was created in Cuba, before Prohibition. It appeared in print as early as 1915, in the book Manuel del Cantinero, by John B. Escalante. The drink was created by legendary Cuban bartender Constantino Ribalaigua, better known as Constante. The drink was popular with locals, and when Prohibition hit the U.S. and all the Yankee tourists flooded into the country, it became popular with them as well. This speaks to the greatness of the drink, as for the most part, Americans weren't interested in local drinks, but rather the drinks they used to get at home, before the 18th Amendment. The Americans liked it so much that they kept the drink alive at home after the tide of Prohibition had rolled back. The drink was created in the wake of the expulsion of the Spanish monarchy, so I like to think that the name of the drink didn't refer to a single president in particular, but rather to the relatively new position itself. It could be that the drink was supposed to be held in high esteem, the way a president should be, in theory. Cuba's record of presidents was rocky at best. Most were figureheads meant to serve American interests. After all, America paid for it. Cuba finally gained independence from Spain in 1898 after the Spanish-American War. Spain agreed to surrender control of their colonies to the U.S. after the war, and a lump sum buyout of $20 million. Those colonies were the Philippines, Guam, Puerto Rico, and of course Cuba. The U.S. fought the Spanish on Cuba's behalf for three months, but the Cubans had been fighting the Spanish more or less nonstop for 30 years. For 28 of those years, one of Cuba's most inspiring leaders, Lieutenant General Antonio Maceo, fought for the cause of Cuban independence. He won the hearts and minds of the Cuban people and died in battle, making him a martyr for La Causa. In Cuba, Maceo was immortalized in monuments and on currency. For this drink, Maceo earned an honorary spot on the label because he embodied the qualities of strength, compassion, and intelligence that a leader should aspire to, particularly a Presidente. This version of El Presidente was made in the classic early 20th century Cuban style, a one-to-one -one mixture of light Cuban style rum and white vermouth, a couple of dashes of curacao, a dash of grenadine, and garnished with a cherry and an orange twist. The use of white vermouth in this drink was a revelation uncovered by David Wondrich, who discovered that the drink originally used Chambouret vermouth, better known as white vermouth, blanc vermouth, or bianco vermouth depending on the brand. White vermouth is a semi-dry vermouth that sits somewhere between a sweet vermouth and a dry vermouth. It's a game changer for this drink. The white vermouth strikes a delicate balance that the dry vermouth just can't touch. Building a cocktail for barrel aging is about being able to scale it. Since the liquid is what causes the wood to expand which creates the seal, you'll need to keep the barrel full. This recipe is for a one liter barrel. You'll have to scale it up for a two liter or a three liter or an even bigger barrel. And if you have a bigger barrel, you'll most likely need to age it a little longer as well. Assuming it's a new barrel, the first step will be to cure it. Do this by filling it with warm water and dumping it out again. It may leak from the head or the butt. In that case, you'll need to cure it again and again until it's ready to go. The idea is to get the water to expand the wood until it creates a watertight seal. In this case, however, I also use the barrel to age some overproof Jamaican rum and a Negroni after that. So some traces of those flavors will be left behind in the barrel. Not exactly the bitterness of the Campari, but more so the orange notes. There was also a little Jamaican hogo in there from the Ray and Nephew. It's not essential to season the barrel with other spirits or cocktails before you age this drink. 
But if you do, just keep in mind that some of the flavors from the previous agents will bleed through into this one. Once you're ready to add the booze to the barrel, measure 470 milliliters, or about 16 ounces of light rum. Pour that into your pitcher. Measure 470 milliliters, or about 16 ounces of white vermouth. Pour that in your pitcher. Measure 45 milliliters, or an ounce and a half of curacao. Add that to your pitcher. Measure 15 milliliters, or about half an ounce of grenadine. Add that to your pitcher. Give it a quick stir, then give it a small taste. Make sure you're putting a cocktail you want to drink into the barrel. Pop in your funnel and pour it in your barrel. Pull out the funnel, plug in the bung, and wait. For a one liter barrel, three to four weeks is usually the sweet spot. However, in this case, I left it in for 90 days. I kept holding out for a deeper flavor profile, and it never ended up getting too oaky. You don't have to leave it in that long. I just pushed it a little longer than usual to get to a flavor profile I wanted. It's always a good idea to taste a little along the way. That way you can see how it's progressing. It may take a little more or a little less time depending on the barrel and how many times you've used it. With this size barrel, 30 to 45 days is usually a good benchmark. But let your taste buds be the judge. When it gets to the right place, unplug the bung, turn your spigot, and drain the barrel. It's normal to lose a little in the process. Stick in a funnel and pour it in your bottle using a fine mesh strainer. That'll help pick up any bits of charred oak that might have come through. Then slap on a homemade label and you're good to go. When you're ready to drink it, measure out a couple ounces, pour it over ice in a mixing glass, and stir it well to chill it down and give it some dilution. Then strain it into a chilled Nick and Noir glass. Cut a wide swath of orange peel, being careful not to cut into the white pith. Express the orange oils over the drink, rub it along the rim of your glass, and drop it in for garnish. Scoop out a maraschino cherry and plop that in the drink as well. And there you have it, a drink for la causa. The barrel age del presidente. Salud. Porque by esa sobra. Click here for more videos. Be sure to subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For links, more info, and the printed recipe, check out the description below.